And starting at uh, verse, starting at verse 28 and 30. And it says, So unto me all ye that are labored and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your soul. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Let us pray. Father, I just thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I just ask you to take your, your manservant and re-edify him, Father. Not only are these people going to be going through this lesson, but I need a refreshing of this entire lesson myself, Lord. So I can put it in my spirit from the things I'm going through in my personal life and the victories you show me my job and the things that I don't work. This can work if you want it to work, but help us work in life. And I ask these things. In Jesus' name, let the house say amen. amen. All right, first of all, I know I talked about this last week. What I'm going to do tonight, if you got paper and pencil, especially if you're in the house, and if you're serious about your deliverance, whether it be emotional, addictively, whatever's going on with you psychologically, I'm ready to show you something and a recipe that is awesome. This recipe was given by a guy named Dr. Rick McKinney. He started it in Philadelphia. You know, he's actually a psychologist. And you know, in psychology they call it RET, R-E-T. And it means rational emotive therapy. So whenever you go to counseling for something going on in your head, that's what they do. But because he is a Christian, he said, I'm going to call it RES, rationally motor spiritual therapy. And he had to make it to every religion, okay, so that the state and other people would. So when he went into the prisons to bring this, he was saying, here's the concepts, but I don't care if you're Muslim, Buddha, whatever, you use the scripture that is going to help you get away from that thing. <coughs> He calls it SDTs, meaning self-destructive thoughts. And he wants you to get what is called an SRT, scripture replacement thought. But before you get that, you got to know the foundations. And I want you to know I have taken his principles, and I'm going to go through as much as the book as I possibly can, but I've taken them and put them directly on you to Christ because this is Christian. Amen? I went through his classes. You even have to be certified after coming out of the class before you can teach them. You know, I went through a program called Teen Challenge and Counseling and all that stuff. So, but I want to take these principles and bring them here. So it ain't going to be a lot of preaching. There's going to be some verses. But tonight we're going to cover foundational truths on how to get you healed. Now some of the things that we are going to cover concerning your healing and with spiritual replacement, I wish I could have made a copy for everybody. But I'll tell you some of the things we're going to be studying over the week. How to over, overcome fear, anxiety, shame. Loneliness, stress, depression, prejudice, false pride, being trapped, anger, guilt, betrayal, and worthlessness. Now, do y'all recognize that everything I just said was emotional? Yeah. Everything I said was emotional. But every one of them can trigger your addiction. And I'm going to show you how it works. It's called understanding an ABCD process. But before we go there, let's start building our little foundation here, all right? All right. Rest, again, as I said, stands for rationally motor spiritual therapy. The word rational refers to one's thoughts and beliefs. Rational refers to one's thoughts and beliefs. Now, motives refers to one's emotions and feelings. Motive refers to one's emotions and feelings. And spiritual therapy denotes internal healing from a spiritual source. Now, he says spiritual source, and our spiritual source is who? Jesus Christ. You know, in the prison they could have been Allah, Buddha, a rock, whatever you want. But he had to open the door for us to get in there and the state said, okay, you got you can't leave nobody out. Now I have a problem with that as a, as a believer, but that's fine. He healed more people than you can believe, really, through these concepts, okay? Now, rest is not about religion, but about spirituality. Religion desires the individual to be the practitioner of that religion. The intent and goal of the spiritual process is to lead each individual to become the best, positive, healthy, and productive person possible that he or she can become. Amen? Amen. Now, what can you expect from studying this? And I know everybody ain't going to get into it. And when I said, Lord, I want everybody to get out. I was going to a different message tonight. But God opened the door for something else to happen. Amen? I'm telling you, if you grab 
one of these things you're going to be fine. I'm serious. It worked in my life. That's why I stayed clean so long. You know, because as soon as that thought came to me, go get high, mm -hmm. I put a scripture replacement thought. Next thing I know, it was gone. Next thing I know, my drug dreams were gone. Next thing I know, I was doing things. Well, how did I? Because I didn't rest on the thought. And now you see why it's called rest. This is what you can expect from studying rest. Your knowledge about addictions and related behavior will increase. You will develop a model by which to continuously change your behavior. Your addictive behavior will decrease and or disappear. I like that one. You will have more control over your impulse. Because it starts with an impulse, right? Right. You will be able to better control your negative emotions. Your level of self-confidence and, and self-esteem will increase. Amen. Amen. You will replace old negative thoughts with positive spiritual thoughts. Your level of stress will decrease. You will feel a new power in your life. And last one, your relationship with others will improve. Amen. Who wants to improve their relationship with other people? Especially our family members. Look down upon us. Amen. Amen. Rest is based on the belief that any learned behavior can be unlearned. Any learned behavior can be unlearned, including drugs, including tobacco, including alcohol, addictions. <laughs> Dr. McKinley wrote this, addictions are falsely referred to as victimless crimes. Quite to the contrary, addiction of one person takes many persons hostage. Amen. Amen. It usually leads to antisocial behavior, mm -hmm. destroys families, mm -hmm. and promotes criminal activity. The addictive person is a prisoner and slave of the drug, and therefore a slave of the evil one, the devil, behind the drug. Most of the world's religions do not see addiction as a medical problem, but a phase of the spiritual war between good and evil. And I believe that. I believe that. They each hold their members who are addicted as being responsible for their own actions and believe that they should abstain from all addictions. No matter what religion you serve, they all say it's a demon that's causing you to do that. It ain't got nothing to do with medical psychology or you're mentally ill because, you know, the world says you're mentally ill and you're getting out if you're using anything. But by our spiritual understanding, and I don't want to get too deep about demons and imps and stuff like that, but that's what's actually using you and using your physical body. I like what uh, I said last time when me and Tom were talking, people who kill themselves are not trying to kill themselves, they're trying to kill the pain mm -hmm. in them. Because they don't want to feel that pain no more. So in trying to kill the pain or the demon, they kill themselves. And that's all the demon wants to do. That's all the devil's job is to do is kill. That's what he wants to accomplish. Let's go to Proverbs 23. Proverbs 23. So I'm going to do a lot of talking and not a lot of questions tonight. I'm going to build a foundation. In the weeks to come, we're going to have a lot of questions. So we're going to cover some scenarios. I want y'all to talk back to me. I want y'all to be real with one another. I want to hear your story. And I want no judgment in this room. I don't care what your lifestyle is. I don't care what your color is. I don't care what your sexual orientation is. All I care about is Jesus didn't care. All I care about is you getting healed and recognizing who loves you and coming clean. All right? All right. So if you want to bring or you got a problem with that person's problem, then you don't need to be in here because you're already judgmental. Everybody got an issue. And everybody got an addiction. Amen. Amen. The key I want you to realize is you're not alone. You are not alone. Amen. From the pulpit to the door, you are not alone. And right now, you should be amongst people who can relate to you. Y'all are the last ones who should judge one another. We go out to the holy, holier than thou church, we feel uncomfortable. Why? Because we can't feel related to. They're so unapproachable. But I'm amongst people I can approach. Amen. Amen? And don't feel ashamed. All right. I just want to make that clear. Proverbs. Proverbs 23, verse 7. 
23 and 7 says, For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, said he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. As a man thinks, that's what he is. So if you think you're a drug addict, then guess what? You're a drug addict. If you think you are a mighty woman of God, then guess what? You're a mighty woman of God. So change your thought pattern. You got to change your thought pattern. That's what we're going to do. Go to Luke 11. Go back to the Old Testament. Luke 11. Now let's see what Jesus said. And then we're going to get heavy into this. Y'all ready to get heavy into this? And I'm probably going to bring a little bit of something that I may have talked to y'all about before, but it's very crucial to this lesson. Said what now? Luke chapter 11. And we're going to look at verses 24 to 26. Verses 24 to 26. And this is Jesus talking. When his unclean spirit is going out of a man, he walking through what? Dry places. Seeking what? Rest. And finding none. He said, I will return unto my house, you, because you're the house he's talking about. Whence I came out of. And when he come, he find it, it find it swept and garnished. Then goeth he and taketh to him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. Amen. Uh -huh. And they enter in and dwell there, and the last state of that man is worse than the first. Amen. That's why they say, even when you relapse, and you go back, it's worse than when you first start. When I realized I was doing more because I was trying to catch up, and you know what else made it even worse? It's because I was born again now, I was getting high again. <laughs> so the devil and the Holy Ghost can't hang in the same body. So when the Holy Ghost sent me trying to get high, it just wasn't working. And it was a battle and a fight. So the demon like, come on, y'all found one. Holy Ghost tried to kick him out. Demon said, no, come on. Then I'm chasing it, trying to get her. Ain't got no more. Now I said, let's go steal. Now that got a demon. Ooh. Hallelujah. Then I go steal. Now I say I got to lie to the person I stole from him another demon. All right. Okay. Now I'm ready. And now it's a woman. Now I him another demon. And each one of them brings seven demons. Ooh. See? So that means it multiplies and multiplies and multiplies. That's why it says he finally empty, sweat, and gone. And I'm going to teach you how that process starts. <laughs> Amen? Amen? But let's talk about this real quickly. The role of Jesus in rest and comfort process. You need to know the role of Jesus in this process. Because I'm not talking about Sorry. I'm not talking Buddha. I'm not talking Confucius. I'm talking Jesus. All right? Make that clear. <laughs> Jesus. Amen. What does it really take to be delivered and have rest? There must be comfort before a person can be delivered and have rest. Some of you heard me talk about this before. All right? And the saints of God should be the ones who provide this comfort and rest. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 1. I'm going to skip over a few. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. It's one of my favorite scriptures. When I found deliverance, this is the way God gave it to me. Amen? Chapter 1. Now I want to focus on some things here. And we used to get in the church and they would tell me, Why you need to believe in scripture. You know, scripture replacement thought. Stand on the scripture. How many of you ever heard that? Find the scripture you love and stand on it. Well, these are the scriptures I stood on and it didn't work. But I'm going to show you why it didn't work. Amen? For me. That don't mean it won't work for you. Because every personality is different. God's going to come at you according to what you need and to what your feelings, emotions, and personality. Just because I said it worked for me, don't necessarily mean it for you. I don't like that concept. I say, here's what worked for me. Now you can add something to what worked for me so it can work for you. Amen? But all the Bible works. It's just how you work. Amen. Okay? So, the things that I tried to stand on during my addiction was verses 9 and 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 9 and 10. But we have the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves, but in who? God, which raises the dead. 
Verse 10. Who delivered us from so great a death and do deliver. See that? And do deliver. In whom we trust that he will deliver. Amen. Yes, sir. I still on those two verses. It didn't work. I prayed them. I cried them. And I spoke while singing. Amen. So I said, God, how come I'm not getting delivered? And he began to tell me, why don't you go up to chapter, same chapter, go up to verse 3. And every time you come down, I want you, if you've got a King James and it's your Bible, I want you to underline every time you see the word comfort and consolation. All right, let's start at verse 3. Same chapter, verse 3. Ready? And it said, Bless be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercy, and the God of all who comfort him. One time. Who what? Comforted. Two times. Who comforted us in all our tribulations. That we may be able to comfort. See that? Them which, which are in any trouble. By the what? Comfort. Wherewith we ourselves are comforted. You see how many times comfort I already mentioned? You see how many times? Everybody see that? Come on. Verse 5. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so are what? Consolation also abound by Christ. And whether we be afflicted, it is of your consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffered, or whether we be what? Comforted. It is for your consolation and salvation. Verse 7. And our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as you are partakers of the suffering, so shall you be also of the consolation. For we would not be, we would not, brother, have you ignorant. We don't want you stupid. Of our trouble, which came to us out of Asia, that we were pressed out of measure. That word pressed out of measure means we were depressed. We had anxiety. We had fears. We were depressed out of measure. Above strength. We didn't even have no strength to get up. Amen. I know I ain't the one been here, right? In so much that we despaired of the life. You know what that means, despair of the life? They were so depressed they were thinking about killing themselves. Amen. Now this is Paul talking. So if the greatest writer in the New Testament had got depressed and thought about killing himself, hello. Amen. And he ain't even ashamed to talk about it. Because he was for us. Then verse 9 and 10 comes in. But how many times y'all seen comfort, 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 counsel, lady? The word comfort in the Greek means consolation during tribulation. That means you need some comfort while you're going through your head. <laughs> and the only ones that can comfort you is someone who is born again. Why? Because if you're born again, you get the Holy Ghost in you. And what is another name of the Holy Ghost? The Comforter. Because Jesus said, I must go away and send the Comforter. Now, he said, if I don't go away, the comforter won't come. But wait, this something. He said, I will send you what? Another comforter. So while he was here, he was telling you he was the comforter of the world. Ain't that something? So he said, now I'm going to leave. Send the comforter. He's going to come inside you. Because the moment you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, the Holy Ghost comes to you. The comforter. The helper. The advocator. The spirit of God. So that tells me, when the Lord told that to me, the reason why you don't have deliverance is because you have not been sowing any comfort in no one's life. Because God is a seed sower. He said, now when you begin to start comforting other people who are going through what you're going through, I will deliver you. Are y'all hearing? Amen. So, start comforting people. Don't get upset. Don't start arguing. Don't think you weak because they got up in your face. You know how to stop the quickest argument and I'm learning it all over again is to look at the person who's getting on your nerves and say, you know what, I love you. Praise God. <laughs> you know what, I forgive you. Now everything inside of me is poison. Everything. But I have to tell my mind, I love you. I comfort you. Wow, well, I don't get it. I still love you. <laughs> Amen. Sowing comfort will bring you comfort. Amen? All right. Amen. Amen. Now watch this. I'm not going to hit that one. Let's start understanding the understanding the A, B, C, D of uh, rest. Ready? Now I'm telling you, you need to really get this. Now, the ABCs and understanding the ABCs of rest goes 
like this. A is going to refer to the activating event. Now, what is the activating event? Anything that happens to you that can be an activating event. Anything that happens to you can be an activating event. Like what? Somebody just got on your nerve. And a lot of people in addiction, we find an excuse to get angry. So we can go out and get up. And then it becomes a part of our lifestyle. We just walk around angry. So anything that will trigger you is your activating event. Got me? Now, B refers to your beliefs that are stored in your brain. So now, I'm activating an event in your brain to get you angry, depressed, whatever way you're feeling. Now my belief system will kick in. Now, if I believe I'm nothing, look what we read. As a man thinketh, so is he. That goes to my belief. Now, C refers to consequential feelings. Now, that word consequential feelings is just a big word for your emotions. What is going on inside? You know, we men have a habit of we ain't gonna let nobody see us cry. But we get just as sick to the belly as anybody else. We were raised with that. Men don't cry, men child. Be a man, man up. And half of us died of a heart attack and stroke because we held on that emotion inside. I used to tell people, I cry while I'm in your tail. That's that simple. I don't have no proper crime. Because I ain't going to. Why do y'all think women live longer than men? Because they know how to cry out the show. But my boy come up and cry, I said, what you want? What's wrong with you, man? Are you crazy? Ain't that right, folks? Be like, what's wrong? Hey, dude, man up. Go home and take care of that. Be man, man, you better go home and take care of that. That's the wrong attitude. I'm sorry. That ain't a man. A man goes home to try to educate, mature, and even when he does get mad, Try to make his female or his wife or his friend understand, I'm not angry because I am pissed with you to the point that I hate you. Allow me to express myself. Because if I don't express myself now and get it out of me, I'm going to let it build up and it's going to explode. And I know a lot of brothers in prison just for killing a woman <coughs> or killing a man in court with a woman. And watch this. Now they in jail and they woman with somebody else. Or women did the same thing, caught their man with somebody and ready to blow his brains out, throw his clothes out, burn him up, all that kind of stuff. Why? Now you in jail and they was with another man or another woman. But you in jail. Makes that. Amen. Now, D refers to what you do or your behavior. Now we want to see how all these relate in one. Rest equation, the most normal. Now, most normal people believe that A, the activating event, are responsible for C, emotions and feelings. Now, if you're not going to get, don't worry, I'm going to keep on saying this. Most people believe that A, the activating event, goes towards your what? Emotions. So as soon as I, somebody bothers me, now I get emotional. Right? Then guess what happens? So A, uh, activating event is responsible for your emotions and feelings there, and there B, what they do, their behavior. So immediately, when I get an event that activates me to go off, I immediately go to what? My emotions. Then next thing I know, it makes me act out what? Behavior. Are you seeing here? Uh -huh. So it starts where? The activating event. Then next thing I know, my emotions. Then next thing I know, I'm acting out. No matter what emotion coming up. Amen? Amen. All right. You can hear this type of reasoning all the time. Uh, my baby made me mad. So A equals C, or I'll drink. So what happens? A triggers my emotion, then I will drink. Got it? OK. Because I got fired on my job, now A immediately goes to D. What does D do? Activating event, the boss fired me, I'm going to get out. You ain't thinking about saying money, just going to go out and do something stupid. Or you're going to come back and think she's going to get close to everybody's face. Because those people go from A to D. They go immediately from the activating event to killing someone. Amen. Amen. This is sick thinking, people. What's wrong with it? It leaves out B. Have you noticed I never mentioned B yet? It leaves out B, or their beliefs, the thinking part of your brain. No wonder there are so many really sick humans. They don't use the thinking part of their brain. We blame others or things that happen to us for our anger, 